Uh, Taurus. We were talking about Taurus before we left off, and I just want to finish off with a few things. Um, <clears throat> still under the subject of Taurus. The spiritual man is represented by gold, the feminine counterpart by silver, while the Adam man is copper. Both gold and silver are said to be noble metals because not easily oxidised. Gold is the fire of life, while silver is the water of life. The, adver the Adi nerve, like the Pingala and the Ida, should be Ida, not Adi, <laughs> the Adi nerve is associated with the pituitary body or gland in the head, while the Pingala connects with the pineal gland. The sun rules the pineal and the moon the pituitary. These constitute the male and female which God joined together in the Garden of Eden, otherwise Aries, the cerebrum. We must understand then why the story which Taurus gives us is relative to motion, doing work. In order that, therefore, in order that such may result, it is self-evident that there is in nature a certain substance that creates motion, which is energy manifesting, and that's sodium sulfate. And that's the second cell salt. You see? So for Taurians, the motion, the motor nerves, that's what they need. They need, um, whereas the potassium uh, phosphate, which is for Aries, is the sensory and for the cerebrum. Okay? So um, these allocations of the um, cell salts are perfect, as you will see. Sodium sulfate is said to be a reducing agent. In other words, it steps down chemical action and lowers the rate of vibration. It has the power to decompose water. In the form of natrium sulfate or so sulfate of sodium, the addition of sulfur causes a little different action. Taurus rules the lymphatic types. Taurus are lymphatic types, for they are deficient in sodium sulfate. Taurians. They will find many of the symptoms which appear at intervals during their lifetime listed under the cell salt in Schussler's biochemic system. There is a general need for all three sodium or natrium combinations. A few of the many indications or symptoms which informs us of the need of this reducing agent are irritation due to biliousness, tendency to suicide, with wildness and irritability from an excessive excretion of bile and from too much fluid, which is of an acid nature in the cells. Headache on top of the head, biliousness, vomiting of bile, dizziness, tongue dirty, greenish-grey or greenish-brown colour, bitter or metallic taste in the mouth, violent pains at the base of the brain, spinal meningitis, conjunctivitis, lightning-like pain through the ears, Enlargement of the liver, diabetes, asthma, dropsy, gout, fistulous abscess of long, of long standing, drowsiness, debility, heavy, anxious dreams, nightmares, sodium sulfate. All of these 12 cell salts equalise all of the um, unbalanced conditions in your body which cause depression anxiety, suicidal tendencies, overweight, etc. It's all about minerals. Gemini. We're up to Gemini. Now, we've discussed that the bulb, which turns out to be bull, is, um, that's the root of the tree. By the way, spine, spine comes from Latin, it means thorn. When you look at, the, when you look at the, just the skeletal structure and you see this little thorn at the end of it, as you hold it from here, for example, it resembles a thorn. That's what spine means. Spina in, in Italian. Spina dorsale. Dorsal spine. Spina dorsale. So it's a, it's a thorn. Okay. Um, gemation. Gemini comes from gemation. Reproduction. Because it's, 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 it's doing, it's reproducing. And by the way, that's when... That's the season in spring, Gemini, when all the little twins are born. Twin sheep, twin goats, and they're frolicking around in the springtime, you see. 
And that's why everything begins. When you're dealing with astrology, everything starts with Aries, because it does. It starts in the high heaven, in Rama, the Ram. Abrama, or Brahma, the most high and exalted. So, <clears throat> so this is why an Arian can never, never be a Piscean. When, when, when astrologers say, oh, you've got to follow the, the, uh, the slippage of the processional. An Arian is always an Arian. It has been for a gazillion years. Uh, for these people who say, oh, the Sumerians invented astrology two to four thousand years ago, and in those days everything was lined up, because they were. They were. Aries did rise in the east two thousand years ago on March the 21st. Here's a question. What if you're born near the cusp of Aries and Pisces? Like myself? And myself. Right. Well, you have, you have a lot of the nature of Pisces. I was born on the 24th of March, so a lot of, a lot of the Pisces influence, the only ones that are pure from contamination are the middle deacon. The, um, the numbers with one digit from one to nine. So April 1st, that's pure Aryan. There's no Pisces contamination. April 11th is starting to receive the Taurian contamination. Or energy, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just you got to. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to have a blend, and it's and it's also good to not have a blend. It's your choice. We all choose to incarnate at that given moment. So um. So Aries begins at the head, you see, and that's why we need to reactivate the dormant brain cells. The sun teaches us that. The sun, Jesus Christ, our Savior, because that's what it is. It's the sun. You see, when the sun comes into Aries, the Lamb of God, what happens is the blossom. Poof! That represents the, uh, the electrical force interacting and impregnating the magnetic earth and then the blossoms come forth. That blossoming, that's the blossoming that you need to experience. That's why you need the Lamb of God that saves us from sin. Because when the sun reaches that point, as soon as it comes out of the winter, where Saturn rules, Saturn rules here in Satan, and he's trying to hinder the sun, and then you have the days of Lent in Pisces, where the Catholics eat fish on Friday. Because Lent is short for lengthening. The days are lengthening. They always lengthen. They wax until the sun reaches 21st of June, and then the sun wanes. So that's why they celebrate Lent. But when the sun crosses that magic day, they go and celebrate the Passover of the Lamb of God. The Israelites. That's Passover. Crossover. Crucifixion. That's the cru these are the four crucifixions. Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Matthew <coughs> comes from Mart, an Egyptian word. Truth. And Thew comes from yeah, Greek, our Greek brothers. Theos, God, the true God, Matthew. And that relates to Saturn. Saturn rules here and here. Saturn rules winter. Mark. Matthew, Mark is Mars. Take your pick. Luke. Luki, Lucy, Lucifer, the sun. The sun rules. See, Mars rules spring. The action of Mars. You see, when you see Mars, on the toilet door, when you go looking for a male toilet, <coughs> you look for that sign there because that's impregnation time right here in Aries, that blossom. Woo-hoo! The Earth, she's a happy Gaia. She's got all the seed now because the sun gave it to her. It wasn't Saturn. It's the sun. So Matthew... Mark, Luke, and John is Jupiter. Jehovah, Jupiter, John. It's the same stuff, and that's Jupiter. These are the four quadrants, the four seasons. And in fact, if you want to, if you want to um, check that, just read <coughs> oh, all the church fathers. We have four gospels because we have four seasons. And didn't you see Leonardo da Vinci's? Is on the table. There's clump. There's the 
clustered or grouped into three, 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 the four seasons. <clears throat> Juno, as consort of Jupiter, refers to this sign. June. Gemini is June. And June, Jupiter and Juno, they always go together. That's Jupiter and that's Juno. You see, in Rome, the church of... When you go to um, the Forum of Rome, the old part of Rome, uh, you'll find on, 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 the, on the Palatine Hill, which is the palate, just above the mouth, you'll find the Temple of Juno and Jupiter, always. Because it's, it's physiology. Of course they're going to copy the physiology. There is no other design other than the body being replicated on the ground. So that's why Christians go off to the Holy Land in Jerusalem. You can get a Holy Land on the Thames, on the Ganges. <laughs> Just take a pick. It's all copied from the human body. That's what the River Nile is all about. The River Nile, if you, if you notice, <coughs> there's the delta that goes off into the Mediterranean. Alexandria is over here. Cairo is over here where the pyramids is just over here and then the Nile River goes like this and then it does a sort of a loop like that. Um, <coughs> and it copies, the pyramids are copying basically Orion and this is, this is the Milky Way and, and that's why all the temples are along here. You've got uh, Abydos, um, Edfu, Thebes is over here, Elephantine down here and, uh, and all the important, there's temples all along here man, there's thousands of them and pyramids up here. This is all copying the human spine. The Jordan is the spine, the descender. That's what it means, descender. The caduceus means descend because it must descend and then it must return. And that in, in church, in churchianity, is called tithing. So you see all these churchgoers, they go, oh, yeah, I better give one-tenth of my money to the church, to the corporation that is doing business in the name of Jesus. Uh, that's all they're doing because that's not... Tithing is about returning at least one-tenth of the oil back to God. God is gad in the brain. If you don't do it, you don't get the goods. And you stay in the lower brain and you are, are like the rest of the herd. <coughs> Parmenides, one of Pythagoras' uh, contemporaries. It is wise both to say and to think that being is. For to be is there to be, and nothing is not. Consider carefully the bar your thought, and bar your thought from the ordinary way that mortals take of two minds. Knowing nothing, wandering aimlessly in thought, swept along as deaf, as blind, dazed, and unwitting heard. That's the Gentiles, the Goy, the people in the outer temple. They don't have access to the higher temple. This is the inner temple. In the brain is the Pia Mater, the Holy Mother. The Holy Mother is the one that secretes the oil. That's why she's the virgin from on high. Isis, the Pia Mater. And outside of the Pia Mater is the Dura Mater. And in between is the arachnoid which means spider web. And from those spider webs between the dura mater and the pia mater come all the rest of the nerves that we say, we talk, uh, you know, if, have you heard, uh, oh, you've got cobwebs in the brain. That's because if you haven't got the chemistry right in the brain, as we will see, you start to lose your thinking. You start to get uh, amnesia and all of those mental problems. What are the other mental problems called? Someone help me, please. Alzheimer's. Dementia, Alzheimer's. Yes, yes. It's all about lack of the 12 minerals. How many doctors are going to tell you that? Oh, I've got this product that will treat your cancer from big pharma and it costs a shitload. You want to buy that? You'll be in debt and it's a treatment. We don't know whether it'll cure you because you can't cure diseases. It's not good for business, is it? See, these are lies, guys. That's why I'm treating you to the truth. Because we do deserve it. We deserve the truth. 
We do. Each and every one of you. Don't feel that you don't. Do not feel that you're unworthy of the truth. It's yours to have. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to... I'm just showing, pointing to things that are obvious to me, to you, and sharing it with you so it can help you. This is empowering information. Very empowering. You know who you are. I just want to read this, what else he says. You shall study the nature of the heavens with all the constellations, also the powerful force of the bright sun, and from whence they all came into being. And you shall study the wandering natures of the moon as well as the surrounding heavens from whence it came to be and how necessity contrived to bind the wandering stars. Ovid in the Metamorphosis, dealing with Pythagoras, the greatest and most inspirational philosopher of them all, bar none. <clears throat> Am I in the right place? Uh, ah. I can look down on those wandering mortals, lacking in reason, anxious and fearful of dying. Uh, I'm looking for the spot where he calls them the herd, because I got distracted. That's why I wanted to share that. But anyway, the point is there. Ovid, 2,000 years ago, the herd, the wandering mortals, fearing of Fearing death. All they think about is worrying about death. Oh, I better just um, work hard and, and acquire material things so I can give the best to my children. See, worldly thinking from the cerebellum, bellum means to make war, bellicose, etc. When we're in the lower mind and we think, oh, yes, but I'm doing all this for my children so they can have the best, the philosopher doesn't think of that. The philosopher is just thinking about ascending and living a moderate, balanced life and not accumulating possessions where rot, moth and rust consume, but storing treasures in heaven. That's what it means. But of course, the, in the churches, you get to heaven once you've suffered. First, you've got to suffer and you've got to come in here and put money in those donations. Don't go to the church over there because they're from the devil. Put the money in that donation box and support this church. The Jehovah's Witness one is the only true one. You won't get saved in the Mormon one, but just put the money in that contribution box. That's what it's all about. Nothing more than that. There's, <laughs> they're not dealing in truth. They're dealing in... in um, <clears throat> oh, well. Okay. What we're doing here is truth. What they're dealing is... That truth. I was a Jehovah's Witness for, pff, I don't know, decades. And uh, their expression, the, their most uttered expression is the truth. Oh, I'm in the truth. Oh, is he in the truth? Oh, he's not in the truth. He's, he can't, he's not serving Jehovah. He's not in the truth. When you put the definite article in front of a noun or an adjective or whatever, you qualify it. You, 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 you condition it. Like if I say air... I'm talking about air. It's universal air. But if I say the air in this room, I can't say air in this room is not good. I need to say the air in this. I'm talking about a, a, a kind of air. I'm locating it. There's no that before God. Exactly. Otheos. So, that tr that's why... They are clever. The governing body of the Jehovah's Witnesses are very clever people. I mean, they're lawyers. They're all lawyers. <laughs> yeah, liars. Yeah, they won't be teaching people about cell salts and about the Christ within and how you really ascend. Just wait for Jesus. He's coming. In the clouds. Frank, my cousin's here. He, he grew up with me, not far, probably a stone's throw from my place in Worali, northeast Victoria, in the Victorian Alps. We grew up on the tobacco farms. And uh, Frank will remember that I was a very zealous little Jehovah's Witness. Do you remember making a bet with you and your brothers and sisters about in 1975 that the end would come? You don't remember that? I'm sure Teresa will remember it. Ask her. Yeah, yeah, I used to go. Oh, the end's coming in 1975. No, 
Oh, yeah, and, and, and my cousins, I remember I, in, on the first days of 76, I had all these coins and I'm, because I made a bet. Actually, yeah, man. I think I remember. I do. Yeah, remember. You remember? Yeah, I, remember I paid coins. you guys in the tobacco kilns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's some history for you. Yeah, I, yeah I've been zealous. I've, I've beat up for preaching about Jehovah by <laughs> my cousins and they just beat me up. Hey? But look, the benefit, is, the benefit is I studied this book backwards. This is the greatest literary work in the universe. It's not historically true. It's literature true. It's philosophically true. God, how can we get that across to these <coughs> lower brain people? There are four brains in the body. The cerebrum, the cerebellum, the medulla oblongata, uh, whoops, there, not that one, that's the ponds, the bridge, the bridge to heaven, <laughs> yeah, and that one, the feeling one, it's the sensation brain, this is where most people, they're, they're, they are so lower brain um, centred, and they're educated, very intelligent, and they focus on reason and logic, but that's where everything below, everything below the intu intuition is deception. It's all deception in one form or another. Okay. <clears throat> so mercury rules Gemini, and the salt is potassium chloride. PC. Pollux Castor. The brain essay is thought, power or electricity constitute the true merchandise of every human body and the great work is to perfect it so that it will be able to attract the highest form of ether, acacia, into the body. We become thieves when we make no effort to do this, stealing not only from ourselves but from others as well. To rob another or oneself is the most precious merchandise, is of this most precious, precious merchandise is truly the sin against the Holy Spirit. It's the sin against the Holy Spirit not returning. That's spirit because it's spirit force. It's electricity. And the sexual orgasm discharges a lot of that electricity. You lose it forever. Gone. In this world, they have a saying, the one you miss, that's the one you miss. You know, if you don't pick up a chick when you go out and drink with your mates, you know, oh, you didn't go home with a bird, oh, <laughs> you missed out. No, you don't miss out. You miss out on nothing. <laughs> nothing at all. You miss, miss out on squandering your brains. In the Greek theology we read, Pollux will either remain immortal, living eternally in Olympus, or if he, would be, if he would share his brother's fate in all things, he must pass half his existence underground and the other half in the golden heavenly abodes. You see, Pollux and Castor are up here. Pollux is supposed to be immortal. Castor is mortal son of Zeus. So Pollux loved Castor so much, so... What, what he did was he exchanged living, they, had, they, they shared a day in the darkness, a day in the light. You see? They, he saved his brother. And you'll see how important this is when we study Gemini and the cell salts and everything. It all links up. Everything is interconnected. <clears throat> in ancient esoteric writings, references to day have to do with the higher mind living the life which leads to illumination, while the night symbolises the, the life of spiritual darkness. Esoterically, Gemini deals with short journeys, letters, mail, carriers, messenger boys, telegrams, the methods of communication, children and relatives, all of those things which have underlying them the idea of threads, fibres, twigs, emanations, that which branches off from a parent, because it does. The lead, as as the, all of these nerves go through the neck, there is Gemini and, and the branches 
branch out from Gemini. <clears throat> the word is derived from the Latin cadus, caduceus, meaning a vessel or jar, also from the verb cado, meaning to fall. A dead body is termed cadaver, a cadaver, because it's fallen, and is derived from the same root. Webster's Dictionary informs us that caduceus is derived from cadere, meaning to fall. Summing up our various interpretations, we find that the human body is a vessel or jar containing the water of life. When the living body falls lifeless, it is termed a cadaver. It is a desert, a desert, deserted place from which the water of life has departed. The inner, the inner meaning of caduceus, then, is concerned with the fall of man. If this is the negative interpretation, since it obviously deals with destruction, then in its positive analysis we find the plan of the rise or ascent of man. So the caduceus is negative and positive. Yes, it falls, but then it ascends. And that's up to us. We can stay fallen. With easy. All you do is just decide, yeah, I'll, I love all that stuff that's going on in the world. I'm having, I'm having it. Whereas the Bible says, do not be loving the world or the desires in the world or the things in the world. For he that loves the world cannot love God. No philosopher reaches the heavens by loving the things of the stone down here, of hell, of Sodom and Gomorrah, of pleasure, lust. All the lusts deceived. There are seven vices as we cadere in our cadaver, our bodies, but then there are seven virtues if we can turn them around. Can we transmute those virtues? That's up to us. And to the extent that we do is the extent that we will have the good life. We won't be going to the doctor every second day. I've never, I've never been to doctors. I went once, I had the croup when I was a little boy. My mother took me to the hospital. That's it. I've had a few operations. I busted the thumb and you know, needed some surgical interventions. But that's it. Don't go to doctors. Don't do them. And I've never had a problem with me my, in, uh, physically um, my life <clears throat> because <clears throat> uh, mentally I have, I have endeavoured to keep this clean. I've never been a drinker of alcohol. Hated it. Poisoned me. I'd be poisoned for days if I got drunk. I've only been drunk a handful of times. I hate it. Disgusting. That's not to say that alcohol is totally and utterly detrimental. Uh, a little bit of wine, a little bit of... Uh, originally, you know, your, um, your uh, liqueurs were made from medicinal herbs and things like that. They were remedies for ailments because they had herbs in them. By the way, you can get sea minerals that are great. These, these minerals are 98% the same as your blood. This brings us to our physiological allotment, allocation, and to the consideration of those parts assigned by the ancients to Gemini, the bronchial tubes and lungs, the shoulders, arms and hands. Some astrologers include the nerves, which is correct if one considers their basic formation as fibres, for other cell salts must be present in order that they may respond to, the, to either sensory or motor impulses. The sensory nerves must be studied under Aries, the motor under Leo. The bronchi are the branches of the tree, the tree of life. The pneumogastric nerve, otherwise known as the vagus nerve, because it is vagrant, it wanders around the body at will, it feeds the spleen, it feels, feeds the, um, the lungs, the, the heart. That's the tree of life. And if it's overly acid, remember the war between Satan, acid, and God, the sun, the electric, and the magnetic. That's what it's all about. And keeping it balanced. Keeping the fine balance. Because it's no use going to some guru who says, oh yeah, you'll ascend after you do these exercises. If your body is swimming in acids and all of those corpuscles are, are, are polarised animalistically because of excessive eating, 
you can do all those exercises you want. You, you will never get there. It's all about the body first. The body must be loved and cared for before the spirit can do anything. The spirit will not, you will never be born again. Being born again means to, to res resurrect the upper, the higher self. And you can't resurrect it. It can never awaken if the body is sick. The minerals are very, very important. Uh, I'm trying to choose the best portions of this book. I just can't bear it. I might have to do another six presentations on this. Wow. He talks about the three fates. Clotho, Lachesis. Is that Lachesis or Lachesis? And Atrophos, where we get atrophy. You know the, the, three, the three fates? Clothos, she gives the yarn, and then one you know, gives it to um, Atrophos, and Atrophos chops it off. The destinies, the three destinies. Well, <clears throat> Gemini is the branching off month or period of the year, as has been heretofore explained. It has to do in utero with the branching off of the nerves from the head to form the body. Thus, it does not require much imagination to see that the story of the three fates is concerned with the three deacons of Gemini. Gemini has three deacons, and they would be Lepus, Canis Major, and Canis Menor. Gemini. Is that right? Yeah, of course it is. Yep. The distaff refers to the base of the brain. So that's where Clothos is. She's at the base of the brain, giving the yarn. where 75% of the nerves of the head concentrate and cross, appearing to wind upon themselves. In some mythological pictures, the thread is represented as first appearing at the feet of Jove in his heavenly spouse. Remember I said June is Gemini, June, Juno, and she is the consort of Jupiter, Jupiter rules Sagittarius. They are opposites, short journeys, long journeys, third house, uh, ninth house. They're both mutable signs and they talk to each other. All the, all the signs talk to it, they're opposites. Virgo talks to Pisces. That's the Christian, the fish of Christianity and the Holy Virgin Mother, etc. Taurus talks to Scorpio. See, Taurus is the top of the spine here, Taurus, and Scorpio talks to the bottom of the spine. So the whole length of the spine is between these two. There's war in heaven. The red dragon fighting against the Lord, the rock, God, Jehovah. That's the war. Because the spinal cord is here. And you've got to go from a fucus in Scorpio to Orion in Taurus. One of the twins, Gemini, he's got his foot on the divine cross. I've explained this in my Galact uh, 2012 Galactic Alignment video. Castor, he's got his foot on the, um, the divine cross. I won't go into it, it takes a lot to explain. But 180 degrees opposite is a fucus, and a fucus has got his foot on the other cross. There's two crosses in the heavens. And they are made by the ecliptic intersecting with the galactic plane, which runs through here. That's the galactic plane. And you see how <clears throat> there's the head, there's the torso, and there are the five signs that have no vital organs in them. They are south, these are north. Ephucus has got his foot here, Castor has got his foot there. The astronomical story of Gemini, we find that in the feet of the twins, a brilliant white star named al Misan or al Mesan is described by Al-Biruni. That's my friend here. The Arabic names are very important when you're doing astrology. They hold the key to everything. When you, when you learn the Arabic names uh, of the stars... <laughs> It unfurls, all this, all this story unfolds. There's no denying it. They absolutely knew it. So, um, 
Al-Masan is described by Al-Biruni as winding <coughs> or curving from the central star. In Babylonia, this star marked the 10th ecliptic constellation, Mash, Mashu, Shah, Rizu, the twins of the shepherd, and may have been the Babylonian lunar mansion, Kigala, the canal. The canal? What's a canal doing in the neck? As we study anatomy and physiology, it is evident that with the exception of the bones, fibrin is necessary in the formation of the nerves, ligaments, veins, tissue, skin, in fact, all flesh. That's why you've got Clotho and the three fates spinning the yarn. The yarn is usually royal purple, which is the colour of your blood and flesh, and it's always spun around a stone which are your bones. From a deep realisation of this fact, I have named potassium chloride the spinning salt. You see? Because the, the three deacons of Gemini are the three in the neck, or in, the, in this part of the body, are the, the, three, the three fates. So you must understand physiology before you want to understand astrology. You can't do it the other way around. And this is why the Bible condemns astrologers. Because they get away with mere fortune telling. Oh, I'll do your fortune. They're just fortune tellers, cheap. They, they're, not, they're not giving you the whole truth. They don't know it. They're, they're not bothered. They're too lazy to study. And they're, they're in here. Most of them are in here. Charlatans. That's why I say to you, you deserve the truth. You deserve to know that astrology is the mother of all sciences. All of them are under its umbrella. All of them. And unless you understand that, you'll never be in the high mind. You'll always be as the, as the goy and as the Gentiles and all, uh, as the herd out there. It's time to separate yourselves. I'm going to do a presentation soon on astrology, just astrology. And I'm going to show you the lifestyle of the astrologer. It was very, very, very strict. Abstinence, absolute abstinence. No going to the circuses of Rome. No participating in anything in the world. The astrologer was the most noble and pure of all. Pollux comes from... Yeah, that's your, your, your thumb. Yeah. Polyge. Yeah, it's connected to that, yeah comes from the word to pollute. Poluere, I think it is. I'll find it in a minute when it's too late. Poluere, to pollute. You see, we, we think of Pollux as the, the divine one, but it's also polluting. And cast, castor is cast of high caste. You see? So it's the other way around. But... <clears throat> The key to the real meaning of castor and pollux is in their etymology. Castor is derived from the Latin word castus, meaning pure. Spotless, abstinence from, sexual, from sensual pleasure, chastity, while pollux means to defile or pollute. That's one meaning. The other meaning is quite the opposite. It puts, and I'll get to that in a minute, it puts pollux in the, in the good light. Thus spirit utilises the wares of the body or physical merchandise in perfecting it and in making it spotless and pure. If the substance of the body is otherwise employed, it defiles and pollutes. You see, that's why it pollutes. Po Pollux can pollute. The twins signifying the higher and lower selves. The individuality and the personality on the mental plane. The individual and the personality. What's the personality? Oh, that's the emotional, cranky, angry one. Oh, I'm a superstar. Uh, I'm a musician. Uh, I'm a doctor. I've got a PhD. Or, oh, you know, the... Ego. Yeah, exactly. The lower ego. Because the ego, the true ego, is the higher personality. You see? Yeah, or God. The individuality. So that's what they mean, the two twins. 
And also the opposite, uh, the word cast means to throw violently or to cast off, to shed. It also means to expurge. This conglomeration of, of dual meanings for both Castor and Pollux substantiates the statement that each alternately goes to a higher vibration, living in heaven one day, and to a lower, living in the earth the next day. Oh, there it is. I told you. There's the word. Polu, poluere means to, um, to pollute. But the other positive meaning of Pollux is... Pol and lux. Lux is light. Here we have the basis of another interpretation. Pol is the Middle English word for top of the head. Which physiolog physiologically is the source of light or understanding, while lux means light. So take your pick. Everything is duality. Gemini represents duality. Beautiful. We're out of Gemini. So we're out, we're out of spring. But did you see all the analogies? Everything is interrelated. When you understand the physiology, which you are getting, I know it's been a good hard slog, um, and you, you realise all the... Because when you look up and you see those stars along the ecliptic, they are all your body above. That's the as above part of you. That's your unconditioned existence. You're just a hologram of that. That is you. Okay, calcium fluoride for cancer. <clears throat> That's where the mother's milk comes from, the breast. It also rules the stomach and the spleen, the white corpuscles. You see, it's a cardinal sign. We've done Aries, and the seed comes from there, but the corpuscles come from here in the spleen. And they get their nourishment from that. As I said, everything comes from the brain, the cerebrum, the wax, the neutral wax. It is well to state at this point, even though we have not yet considered the calcium side of cancer, that deficiency in calcium fluoride causes one to be forgetful. The threads or filaments of thought are not elastic. We read about webs in your brain, scientifically termed the arachnoid, spider membrane, interposed between the pia mater and the dura mater of the brain and cord. It is well known that the brain disease termed lunacy becomes intensified during certain periods of the moon. And as luna is the ancient name of the moon, we now have the key to the symptom. The brain fluid or ocean of the great mother is disturbed the spider-like membranes are starved. Again, I repeat that it has to do, cancer, not with the procreative germs, but with the ceaseless formation of corpuscles within the spleen. Corpuscles come from corpse, body. It's bodybuilder. Cancer is the bodybuilder. That's why it's the mother. That's why the moon rules here. And that's why, of course, mental problems occur with cancerians if they lack their cell salt, calcium fluoride. That fluoride is also good for the teeth. Yes, you heard it. Fluoride is good for the teeth. Not the shit that they give you at the dentists. Sodium fluoride, calcium fluoride. In many works we find reference to Aries, Cancer, Libra and Capricorn, the signs constituting the cardinal or creative cross as the gates of heaven for they include the solstices and equinoxes. Physiologically, these signs have to do with creative functions, as explained heretofore. The fluoride of lime is found in the enamel of teeth, connective tissue and the elastic fibre of all muscular tissue. A lack of elastic fibre in muscular tissue causes falling of the womb, varicose veins and a general sagging down feeling. When a deficiency of this lime salt and consequently a deficiency of elastic fibre occurs in the connective tissue between the cerebrum and the cerebellum, an abnormal process of thought occurs causing groundless fears of financial ruin, fear of poverty, etc., fear of letting go. See, the crab likes to hang on. That's why if cancerians 
do not have that salt. They have a strong fear of letting go. Continued maintenance of the health of the corpuscles is life in the physical body. Uh, fluoride comes from the word flux, flow. And it also pertains to the menstrual flow, the moon flow, fluoride. It is well known that the moon has very much to do with the ebb and flow of tides. Beautiful. Next sign. The lion. Magnesium. Phosphate. It is necessary to consult a Latin dictionary in order to obtain the etymology of Leo, which is to blot out, to destroy, to annihilate. That's Leo. can be a very destructive sign. This is entirely in keeping with the nature of this animal. But in what way, some will inquire, does this carnivore synthesise with the fifth division of the human body? The basic interpretation of this, the latter is motion, energy manifesting in action, and the parts of the anatomy having to do with it are the heart and the motor nerves. In Lat the Latin verb augeo, from which it is derived, means to make, to increase, to fertilise. As the heart is a great mass of nervous muscular tissue concerned in dividing, lifting and circulating the blood, it receives from the inner sun in Aries. Motion then is mechanical, positive and scientific, the end, scientific interpretation of the Leo. Motion, not emotion. Emotion is destructive. Sorrow has a contracting and crystallising effect on the nerves and it is a fact that it very materially limits the supply of energy sent ordinarily to the solar plexus. The functions of all the organs are thus retarded. Particularly do we find trouble arising relative to digestion, liver, kidney and bowel action. Is it, is it any wonder that the sexual act causes severe strain on the heart? It is not uncommon for death to result at its termination. King David killed a lion. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered, delivered it out of his mouth. Notice this. He delivered the lamb from the lion. So he, he, he smote the lion to save the lamb. He's talking about Ares and Leo. And he's destroying the animal passion of the only beast of prey in the zodiac. Magnanimity is also ferocity and is a quality of, um, of the lion. The lion has two sides in the scriptures. The saviour, the lion of the tribe of Judah, or where it says, your adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Yeah, it just talks about the negative and positive uh, emotions of Leo and how they can be good or destructive. Times with the solar plexus. We find this plexus to be the abdominal brain and therefore the ma a matrix or womb. From the latter word we obtain the so-called feminine interpretation. But because it is creative only on a higher plane, it must be interpreted as neuter or barren. It is barren to carnality. Yeah, Virgoans are known for their um, um, that, well, they're not as promiscuous as the other signs. They are known as truly um, the most faithful and loyal of the signs. <coughs> But it is indeed fertile to spirituality, which is the source of its name, Virgo, the Virgin. And the names of the twelve, the twelve uh, nerve endings to this plexus, one is the solar, one is the lunar. Besides the two semilunar ganglia, there are the following. The phrenic, the hepatic, the lenal, the superior gastric, the suprarenal, the renal, the spermatic, the superior mesenteric, 
the abdominal, aortic, and the inferior mesenteric. You see the systems of 12 all throughout the body. It's the temple of soul of man. The interpretation of the word bowels is interior, the interior part of anything, the bowels of the earth. And that's what intestines mean, interior. And that's ruled by Virgo, the interior. As Leo is the heart, she is the interior. The solar plexus is always deficient in power until the cerebrum and cerebellum are perfected. For insufficient is generated to supply it. In addition, none of its own parts are perfect. Therefore, it is unable to respond other than in a spasmodic way to the energy which it receives from the brain. The solar plexus is both a receiving and broadcasting station. Uh, sodium potassium sulfate. Let me just check. I'm, I'm, I'm getting tired now. <laughs> potassium sulfate. It will be well at this point to read over the, the chapter on Taurus and note that the middle deacon of that sign is related to Virgo. The middle deacon of Taurus is related to Virgo. How do I know? Well, because the first deacon... Every sign is divided into deacons. The Venus rules Taurus, therefore Venus is here. And that's an earth sign. The next earth sign is Virgo, which is ruled by Mercury. The next earth sign is Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn. So you've got Venus, Mercury, Saturn. Mercury is Virgo. So Virgo is over here on the 1st of May, May Day, Maya, the Virgin. You see how it works? You wonder why, what's it? <clears throat> May Day. <clears throat> Falling as it does on the 1st of May, it is commemorated as May Day, sacred to the goddess Maya, the Virgin. Uh, it is very interesting to find that the Middle English word for marrow is Mary. You see the oil that comes from the bones, the marrow, is the same that the virgin produces the oil in the, the marrow and the lamb produces the oil in the cerebrum. That's why the sun is born of a virgin. Libra. We're moving along, guys. We're, we're up to here. And this will, this will be very quick. And then we'll get into some quickly some, um, some facial uh, diagnosis. And you'll see how it's... Absolutely incredible to diagnose the deficiencies of these cell salts in people. The name Libra is Latin for pound. Pound is a unit of weight for the scales. A pair of scales is a glyph for the sign, as October means eight and is the eighth month beginning with March, the, second the spring equinox. We must analyse this number. Eight is made up of four plus four, or two squares which constitute the two weights in the scale pans. Take note of the word pan, bread, pantry, and the god pan. And pandemonia and panacea. It all comes from these. The idea underlying the analysis of this sign is that of balance, equilibrium. In a cosmic sense, it is analogous to the two halves of the year, the two halves of the year, the, the pans. <clears throat> Physiologically, it has to do with the kidneys, adrenal glands and bladder, which constitute the last of the vital organs and the first half or vital part of the body. The seven months beginning with Aries constitute the vital months of the year. There are no vital organs in the parts corresponding to the last five zodiacal signs. As the well-being of the lower parts of the body depends on the perfect functioning of the vital organs, so does involution depend on evolution and vice versa. The forces of nature are now indrawing after having been focused into the matrix or womb of the earth, Virgo. The word for kidneys, the um, Libra corresponds with the two kidneys. The word the word for kidneys in Latin is 
Um, let me just check how it's spelt there. The old archaic name for kidneys is reins. Uh, in my in Italian, it's uh, the kidneys are reni. Uh, reins, the two reins of the bridle of the horse for balance. If you pull one kidney, rein, it's unbalanced. Okay. Remember words. That's what the kidneys do. They are the reins. Keep them balanced. With natrium phosphate. Uh, and it also has to do with Lucifer because Saturn exalts here and he's also known as Lucifer. So is Venus. By the way, Lucifer is all of them. Because I get attacked by ignoramuses on my YouTube site. Uh, one, one. <laughs> don't want to use a disparaging word because it's not worth it. But uh, one person wrote, "Oh, Santos doesn't know what he's talking about." In one breath, he called Saturn and the, uh, and the Sun planets. Yeah. Well, the Moon's called a star. Saturn is called a star. Just check out Macrobius. Macrobius. In his great work, 1,600 years ago, uh, Saturnalia, talking about Saturn, the festival that occurs down here in December when Saturn comes, he called the sun all the planets. He said the sun is known as Janus, Bacchus, Yelios, Apollo, Yulio, Delios, Loxias, Phobus, Phanes, Lucius, Sabasius, Liber, Euboles, Dionysius, Yao, which is Jehovah, Hades, Mars, Mars, the sun. That's what he is. So, so this idiot basically has gone on record, because the comment is still there on YouTube, gone on record to show his ignorance, not my ignorance. None of this, I, I won't be debunked by any idiot. <laughs> None of my work will be debunked, ever. It will stand the test of time. Because it is the true doctrine. It's not mine. I didn't invent it. I'm just showing you the true, true doctrine. So that when the idiots try and attack me, it's, they're showing their ignorance in not knowing the science. Saturn, Jupiter, there you go, Saturn. Pan, Serapis, Adonis, Attis, Hercules, Asclepius, Draco, Mercury. Oh, I'm missing a lot of great stuff here too, by the way, as I'm flicking through here. <laughs> you just got to get this book. Yeah, it talks about the acids that, um, that affect uh, Libra and the symptoms. Symptoms are pretty powerful. I'll try and go through a few of those as we get, as we get going. Scorpio. Scorpio was known as the thief. The thief, rather. Um, <clears throat> the eighth sign of the zodiac and why was it called a thief the electrical fire manifesting in lightning is analogous to the fire of life which leaves the body at the termination of the sexual act and then it goes into the scripture in the bible in revelations it says and they had tails like unto scorpions and they were stings in their tails and their power was to hurt men five months Revelation 9, 3, 4, 10 and 11. It is obvious that there is a deeper meaning to those words. See, Scorpio hurts men, has sting for five months because of winter. So that's one interpretation. But the other interpretation is that it hurts the lower part of the body because it debilitates the legs. That's why even in the Bible the principle is there. When you, the day before war you do not have sex. Um, and the day before anything important, they wouldn't have sex because it just debilitated the bottom half of the body. <clears throat> the secret explanation of the word hurt is revealed when it is realised that the wrong use of Scorpio, the procreative organs in sexual excess or self-abuse, not only actually impairs the activities of these five parts, but very often results in paralysis. Therefore, five-twelfths of the human body is directly and constantly deteriorated 
as a result of sex life. In addition to the indirect effect on the other seven twelfths, the extremities, extremities become less and less active. The limbs stiff and lame, the back is bent, and one appears old even if he is not. It is obvious that the term thief is exceedingly appropriate for the sting of the scorpion as interpreted physiologically also most assuredly results sooner or later in death for all. The sex act not only steals energy from the five divisions of the body represented by the extremities but slowly and surely reacts on the brain in exactly the same way. Besides whether we wish to believe it or not, it is a fact that the basic fluid in all the glands is created in the brain, which is the first gland in the body. The cerebrum is truly the fountainhead of life, and within it is precipitated the mysterious semi-fluid and wax-like substance, which is termed grey matter. Scorpio is calcium sulphate. Calcium sulphate. Again, calcium. Lime. The builder. Uh, okay, Sagittarius, silica, which is silicon diox dioxide, which is silica. Sagittarius comes from saggio. In Italian we say to saggiare, saggiare means to taste, to try. So it means to perceive quickly, to feel keenly, all of which relates to mind. Because you see the man is coming up out of the horse. He's inheriting the, the human mind. Excuse me, rather than the animal mind. That's the animal brain. The horse is endeavouring to gallop upward. And by the way, Sagittarius rules, Sagittarius rules the hips. The Greek word for horse? <coughs> Hippo. Hippo. We already, just, we already discussed um, the, um, the coccyx, which is the cauda equina. You see, this is where Sagittarius is. The hips, the hippos. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I won't be able to go through it. I was going to try and discuss the symptoms. Uh, but it is best that you, you, you get one of these. They're not very expensive. I think they're about 20 bucks on Amazon. But as you can see... I've read some of the richest portions of this book and I've missed a lot of them. I've got notes everywhere here and you can tell that when you buy this book you're going to get a good book. <laughs> a really good book. Okay, Capricorn. Well, what can I say about Capricorn? Uh, calcium phosphate. Capricorn rules the bones. Calcium lime for the bones. Now, it also corresponds with January and Janum. Let's do a freshie here. Janum in Sanskrit means slumber, Janus, because that's when the winter, the sleep of winter. The sun is sleeping in the winter. But it also corresponds with Janu, which means in Sans oh, sorry, in Hebrew, that's Hebrew, Janum. Sanskrit, Ni. Capricorn, the kneecaps. In French, they say Janu. Janu, Ni. Janu, because it's the knee. Capricorn rules the knees. Aquarius rules the shins. Pisces, the feet. I'll probably go, have to go over this again. Aquarius. Two Aquarians over there. Any more? Yeah. Hands up. Can I see you? Yeah, you can just see uh, Aquarians. You can see the, the air. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. Love it. Err. Uh, Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius and Saturn. U Uranus and Saturn. Ur er in uh, Hebrew means light. I've already explained in other videos that or means gold and time and light. And you get words like the word of God, the Lord, 
Orion, orgasm, origa, even august is another derivation of that. Um, AU. Uh, AU is what? Gold. Gold. Well, guess what month turns up here? Yeah. The light of the sun, the august holy sun. Australia. Australia. Beautiful. You see how, that's why I read that at the start of the book. Words are containers. So are letters and numbers. They're all glyphs. When you see glyphs for, say, Libra, Libra is a glyph that goes like this. When you see these glyphs, that's just another language. There's no need to condemn astrology because you don't understand that glyph. When you go to Japan, uh, you know, that means earth, cross. Well, it, does that mean that they worship the devil? I mean, in our language, that's, that's a letter. Uh, that's a number. What's scary about these things? Nothing. But this is how they've divided us. So that we don't see the relatedness, the interrelatedness of all things. They're all interrelated. And I'm just showing you little snippets of this. Okay, so uh, sodium chloride is table salt. But if you're going to take it, make sure it's natural, sun-dried salt. And that's for Aquarius. Mm. Salt. Salvation, the age of Aquarius is upon us. The salvation of Aquarius, the sign of the Son of Man. The Bible says when you see the sign of the Son of Man in the heavens, know that the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of heaven is near. Because Aquarius, the motto for Aquarius is, I know. You see, we've been in, I believe, for 2,000 years. The sun has been believing in Pisces, ruled by Jupiter and Neptune. But, but there's, there's Jupiter, and, and, that's, and that's Jesus. Jupiter. It's, or Jesus. It's just a compromise of the Latin and Roman names for Jupiter. In Greek, they call him Zeus. Oh, sorry, I said Latin and Roman. I should have said uh, Latin and Greek. In Greek, it's Zeus. In Latin, it's Jupiter. Jesus. And there you have the ruler of the last 2,000 years, Jesus. And now Saturn and Uranus is coming. Uranus, Uranus means light, heaven, Uranos. <clears throat> Ganymede is another name for uh, Aquarius, the cupbearer. Gani also connects with the Ganges River because... The Eridanus River flows from Aquarius, Ganymede. Canopus? Uh, Canopus is in, um, in Argo, the ship here. It's, it's, a bright, it's the second brightest star in the sky, I think. Second to Sirius. All right, guys, we're up to Pisces. Ah, oh, the symptoms. Oof. The symptoms for um, lack of salt. You're going to see them in a minute. Uh, the fish. The fish turn up at March. Here. February, March. You march with your feet. I must turn my attention to the symptoms, guys. Okay? Absolutely fantastic. Let's just go through a few of these, shall we? All right, so Pisceans, iron phosphate. Please let the camera have a look at that really carefully. Um, this woman has dark bluish black circles of the eyes that start in the corner of the eye, showing the ferrum phosphate deficiency. She also has a calcium sulfate deficiency, as seen in the brown spots. The eyes are deep set indicating a silica deficiency. This person has dark circles under the eyes that show the iron phosphate dis deficiency. The face has red magne magnesium phosphate de deficiency overlay. That's 
lack of iron phosphate. Red ear edges. The waxy appearance on the cartilage shows a calcium phosphate deficiency. The vertical lines in front of the ear show a silica deficiency. Strong circles under the eyes. All right, we've done that one. Photo clearly reveals the typical Kalimur deficiency. That's uh, Kalimur is uh, potassium sulfate, yeah? Okay, chloride. Um, <clears throat> notice the acne rosier-like cheeks and the nose with fine spider veins. She also shows a nat sulfate deficiency of lower eye bags. Sodium sulfate deficiency, Taurus. See the eye bags. This woman has a milky coloration in her eyebrows. A sign of calimer deficiency. She has a cali sulfate deficiency shown in the brown spots. The deep set eyes are a silica deficiency. Calimer deficiency. Calimer deficiency. It's Gemini. Now, this is a great book, Facial Diagnosis of Cell Salt Deficiency, but I must say that it's very irritating that this guy has not put, he has not respected the order of the zodiac. He doesn't start with Aries, he starts somewhere, I don't know. You know so you can't, I would be much more confident with this book if I could start at Aries and I would be able to go tuck, 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 and show you what all, but I've got to jump around because he's committed, committed absolute sacrilege by not going from starting from Aries. When you see a horoscope starting with Aquarius because they think that it starts here in January, don't read it because it was an idiot that put it together. It must start in Aries. Everything begins in Aries. It's the most high place. This woman has sunken temples and cheeks and raised eyebrows. This is a severe caliphosphate deficiency. That's for Arians. Born out of a history of anxiety. The red cheeks are a sign of calimer deficiency. She also has a ferrum phos deficiency noted by the dark circles under the eyes. She has a reddish chin which indicates a nat phosphate deficiency. These are all Arian deficiencies. This man has sunken temples and cheeks and the nervous system of the right eye's raised eye brow. These are signs of a nervous person with a severe Kali phosphate deficiency. The waxy appearance is a calcium phosphate deficiency. Large pores on the nose are indica indicative of natmer deficiency. This man has slightly sunken cheeks and temples showing a caliphosphate de deficiency. The shiny forehead indicates silica deficiency. The red chin is a sign of natphos deficiency. Caliphos deficiency. Yellow cast to his skin. There is also a definite sunken temples. These outer signs point to severe caliphosphate deficiency. The stress of cancer has caused the severe nerve deficiency of caliphosphate. Oh, look, there's many, many more, guys. Um, one I do want to point out is um, one I pointed out to my wife <laughs> the other day. Uh, she's a Sagittarian. Sagittarians, you'll find they have um, silica, is the um, cell salt. The silica deficiency seen here is in the translucent skin quality of the temple area. There are also the beginnings of fan-shaped wrinkles. The start from the corner of the eye, 
with dark circles under the eye indicating a calcium fluoride deficiency. There is a green shading indicative of NAT sulfate deficiency. The reddish colouring next to the nose is Calimer deficiency. Well, that's interesting. Beautiful. There they are. There they manifest. All right, so that's, that's enough. That's, that's, that's about it for the deficiencies. Uh, I just want to tidy up now with the last few remaining minutes. Guys, uh, look out everywhere for things that will interconnect the uh, information that is loosely you know, floating around out there because it can be interconnected. Um, the, um, I just want to quickly just go through some of the posters I brought along which I was going to spend a lot of time on but I didn't get a chance to. That's Raphael's Ezekiel's vision. Notice here the bull, the lion, the man and the eagle. The bull, the lion, the man and the eagle. The four fixed signs of the zodiac. Notice these things. <clears throat> Ulysses. Ulysses wandered for ten years in the oceans. He was a hero. And the sirens are basically just those desires and psychic temptations. And to tie yourself to the centre of the the ship, the mast of the ship, so that you can be firm in your resolves to resist all those temptations and all those desires and emotions that everybody's getting entangled in. Oh, who's going to win the Olympics? Who's going to win the football? And they believe in it and they go bet betting on it so that they, you know, they can uh, just get entangled in it. And they just... This is, this is, the, this is the hero... He returned home after 10 years. 10 years is indicative of, our, of a lifetime. That's what the Greeks were talking about when Homer was talking about the, uh, the Odyssey. The Wanderings of Ulysses. Please read The Wanderings of Ulysses by Thomas Taylor. Thomas Taylor lived a couple hundred years ago and he, he interpreted all the Platonic philosophies of the Greeks, etc. And he... Um, it's only a very small book. It's only like about 10, 10 to 20 pages. And learn what it means when Circe changed his men into swine, when his ship had to go between the rock and the whirlpool, desire and anger, and he has to overcome those. When, um, when he had to resist the sirens, you see, that's the straight and narrow road that few are walking on. But broad and spacious is the road leading to destruction and everybody's walking on those. I just want to also show you something that is really good for healing. I have um, a couple of the Egyptian healing rods. <coughs> These are um, zinc and uh, copper. And um, zinc and copper. And you put the zinc in your right hand uh, sorry, uh, in your... Which... My niece bought these for me. These are $350, okay? They're full of crystals and wax. And you carry them in your hands like that. <coughs> Guess who was doing that thousands of years ago? You see them holding them in their hands, the healing rods, and with their left foot forward. The left foot interacts with the right brain, the upper brain, the intuition. So when you go, when you go walking, I go walking with my dog up the hill barefoot on dirt with these in my hand. It's absolutely fantastic how it feels. Amazing how it feels. These are like two terminals. Do you want to explain how they work? Consciousness, balancing all your energetic lines, your meridians, your chakras. Is it similar to organ? Uh, organ? 
or organize yeah, I, I could, the structure I would say is different. Um, maybe similar. But if you look, if you go on the internet and you look up Egyptian healing um, rods, there's a place that they, um, I think it's in America, and they actually charge the crystals and the pyramids, so it's pyramid energy as well. Um, but a lot of the pharaohs and high priests used to do it in, you know, before, every day they used to do it, but it used to prepare them for communion with the gods, so expanding consciousness and grounding yourself. And, and healing in all like the 12 systems you were talking about, the nervous system, the doctrine system. But you can get cheaper ones, you can get ones like they were, that they just got more quartz content in them, but you can get some for like a hundred. <laughs> they were the ones that were the yeah, one why not? Like, you know, Self-consciousness, they call it, and that's for people that are very experienced. And even myself, like I, I found those things a bit overwhelming. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, but where do you get them? Egyptianhealingrods.com. Yeah, but I think there's a few places that sell them online through that supplier. Yeah. But I'd probably get a brand new pair because once you touch them, it's sort of got your images in. But yeah, originally the Egyptians, I think they had one made of gold and the other made of silver. Um, but these days, I think there's a little bit of silver in the zinc and a tiny bit on the inside just to, but yeah, still the same principles magnetic, electric, and. Yeah. yeah. Harmonising. Little things. The reason why I brought those out is because I just want to spend two minutes. Um, just encouraging you how to get this philosophical stone, your stone, perfected. Um, with there, there are foods that you can eat that are high in, in all of these minerals. Walnuts, parsley, uh, kale, um, almonds. And you can, you can get an idea of those uh, through all of the works of um, George Carey. I read from that book on the Zodiac, but he's got God Man. I've done a whole presentation on that one. God Man, the Word Made Flesh. The Wonders of the Human Body, Physical Regeneration According to the Laws of Chemistry and Physiology. The Tree of Life, an expose of physical regenesis on the threefold plane of bodily, chemical and spiritual operation. The Chemistry of Human Life. One book better than the other. But, um, I mean, some of the foods, asparagus, strawberries, figs, apples, plums, cucumber, um, etc., etc. There are some websites that, um, that go into that. Um, no, wheat is, wheat is a hybrid, and therefore it has starch in it. Which is, which is acidic. You know, wheat is made from two other plants, right? Like carrots, potatoes, etc. The, um, the controllers have been hybridising our food supply for a long time to, to make it acidic, magnetic and not electric. It doesn't have halicali in it, alkalinity. So wheat suffers of that. Originally it may have been pure, you know, like corn. Corn has been hybridised. And if you get into Dr. Sebi's stuff, he explains that. He explains how important it is to keep the alkali food, alkaline foods in your body. This comes from that book, from today's book, and that's the um, embryo. The geometrical diagram proves that the human embryo is ellipsoidal. This is the true path of the sun in the universe the path of energy in man and the path energy takes in utero to form a child. And that path is this. It goes, it goes around and then it goes back into the central sun and then it expands back out again and goes, and goes back to its original point. Outpouring on March the 21st from the central sun, sun back of the sun, because there are always two suns, there's always the spiritual sun. Be behind all of those stars you see, there always, there's always the sun back of the sun. Uh, to the east, see arrow. The arrows indicate which way it goes. 
from east follow outline of embryo to central sun, then west to Libra sun sign, follow line south, then around into the central sun and our out again to the east. This is basically showing you that from the embryo stage, the sun is um, the sun is is building with its electricity the human body. That's why astrology must be understood. It's all based on that. So I just want to encourage you before we close off to um, to help this process by doing things like solar gazing, walking on dirt every day, earthing. I brought all these things along. Uh, half of the, the things I brought along we're going to miss out on, but, but um, there will be another time. The most important health discovery ever. It's amazing how good you feel after a walk on dirt. Not grass. If you're living on the beach, go on the beach. Sand, yeah. If you live on the beach, you're very lucky because sand is the best. Yeah, sea salt. Yeah. And you can, you can watch the sun at the same time. You can watch it setting or rising. Don't watch the sun when it's high because it's got a lot of ultraviolet rays. And what you're doing is you're getting minerals from the sun. The, your, optic, your optic nerves, the sensory nerves, go straight to the optic thalamus and go straight to the pineal gland. You watch the sun. If you learn how to solar gaze properly, um, you, can, you can receive that electrical uh, energy which absolutely electrifies your batteries. And your body is a battery. It's a chemical battery. There's other things you can do. There's supplements. Um, breathing. Breathing is so important. As I mentioned at the start, you can alkalize your body with proper breathing. Know the secret that you are your breath. That's all you need to know. Once you master that, once you understand what that means, your breathing will take care of itself. You are your breath. Stop breathing for a few minutes and you'll see what happens. You go purple. It's, it's the Holy Spirit. And God put breath into Adam and he became a living soul. The soul is the sun, the soul moon, the temple. It works on breath. It's more important than water and food. Food is not so important at all. And we're overeating. We're living to eat instead of eating to live. And that's what you get hunger pangs in the morning because your stomach is begging to shrink. It doesn't want to be expanded as we are putting you know, triple hamburgers from McDonald's in there because triple is better than double. It's triple. It's got layers of cheese and shit and all sorts of things. You know, and the stomach goes again. And then there's acid and fermentation. And meat, of course, stays in your system from sev for seven days. It doesn't digest. Meat never digests. It ferments. And that's the poison. And this is why it's so important you see a lot of food ads on TV, and in particular junk food. It's criminal. Red Rooster, Hungry Jacks, McDonald's. Get it. It's the best. It's got a great new sauce. We invented it. <laughs> Put it in your body. And you see, because of the sensation, this is sensation. It only satisfies the palate. Does does nothing. This, this guy down here is just dying for decent food. So help, help with your body. Go raw. Go raw as much as you can. Have a five-year plan to, you know, or a two-year plan to go raw, to get off meat. And just the minerals. Concentrate on the minerals. The 12 minerals will balance and perfect that philosopher's stone. I'll take questions now, and then if you guys need to go, please go, and I won't be offended. It's very late. eating red meat, red meat for about a year now, uh, but I feel really difficult to stop eating um, animal products at all. Uh, so I just want to get your view around that. I mean, you said just before that go all, uh, but there's also some studies suggesting that uh, you need to have a certain amount of animal products as well. So I'm not sure where's, I don't know. That's why I said at the start, beware of half-truths. <coughs> mm, beware of half-truths. It's a half-truth. Species, how we never actually evolved at times when we ate meat. Um, we only actually evolved um, it's the way we are now in times where berries and nuts and plants, and some birds, but that's it. Yeah. Yeah, and don't, you know, don't.
freak out if you're eating meat and everything. Have a five or ten year plan. The guy that I recommended before, Genesis Sunfire, um, he, he took 15 years to become a breatharian. And he says, when you listen to that on YouTube, uh, his, his position with, with food, it's, it's, it's an industry. It's a big industry, man, and, and, it's, and it's fooling people. People are overeating and, and being very, very over-dependent on food. Oh, okay. I'd be going with the best books of all. I'd be going with the two series. I didn't bring the other one of The Light of Egypt. Uh, I'd be going with um, <coughs> God Man. So there's two volumes of that one. God Man, The Word Made Flesh. This one because of the mineral salts. And Sri Yukteswar, The Holy Science. It's a little book from the East and it's ties in with all of this. They all do. As I said, they are all different languages. Originally, you would be practicing the Jewish religion on a Saturday because it's Saturnian. And then on a Sunday, if you wanted to go to church, you would go to a Christian church because that's solar. On Friday, if you felt like going to worship God, you would be a Muslim. Mercury is Wednesday. Buddhist, the Buddhists, their holy day is Wednesday. Islam, it's Friday. Jewish, it's Saturday. Sunday is the Christian holy day. There were seven, there were always seven religions, universal religions. It didn't mean you had to stick to one and hate the others. They're all different languages, different expressions of the same thing, the true theology. This is the true theology. Please read Thomas Paine. Thomas Paine explains that and he really, really uh, exposes the Christian system as a very, very deceptive, evil, subversive system. It has given us the worship of men rather than worship, the worship of the gods because they they're looking for a man saviour to come in the clouds whereas the saviours are the spiritual and physical bodies in the universe and the spirit behind them. What about uh, the Christianity, etc. Do you have do you recommend any books around Islam in terms of just researching the connection between uh, astrology and Islam? Do you have any recommendations at all? Or? Well, well, this guy, guys like this, uh, Rumi, and, 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 uh, and all the Sufi is, Islamic literature is the, be the best on the planet. They taught the, the, the West at one stage what it's all about. It's all, it's all astrotheology. They knew it. The, the, Islam, the Islamic religion um, at one stage made astrology an official science. They had the balls to do that. Christianity never has because they'd lose all their business. But all this, all this deprives... This is the destruction of corporatism. This is the destruction of empire, of Babylon the Great. This is the end. This spells the end of it. It's coming back. It always has been there and it will never go away. It's been persecuted, yeah. Many have died for teaching this. Many. Not for going around preaching Jesus is coming in the clouds. That's what the history books tell you. That's only since the Rothschilds have manipulated the history books for the last 200 years. That's the bullshit you get in school. But the true stuff is what I'm telling you here. The people who... Giordano Bruno was teaching this. He was saying that the sun, our souls are entities and there's extraterrestrial population all over the place. With um, the planets and that, like uh, Paracelsus and all them great philosophers, how did they know which planet was which back thousands of years ago? By looking at the skies? Uh, by looking at the sky and watching them? Yeah. yeah. And I still don't know which planet is what. Um, well, this is where you need to get uh, get familiar with them, and then you'll you'll rem you'll know when you see when Venus is ceases to be an uh, an evening star, then you look for her in the morning. Yeah. And m same with Mercury and Jupiter and uh, Venus are very obvious. They're so big; they're the brightest luminaries in the sky. Venus stands out. She, Venus actually casts a shadow on the Earth. 
the sun and the moon cast shadows on the earth, so does Venus. So, I suppose back in the old days, you know, they didn't have television and that, so they'd sit and watch the stars. Yep. <laughs> According to Manly P. Hall, the Chinese used to use a tube. Because if you use a tube to watch those celestial bodies, what happens is the light is concentrated in a narrow, and you can, you can en enhance the light by looking through a long tube. That was the original telescope. Toth, the Atlantean, yeah, he was the builder of Atlantis in the fifth dimension, and then he built. Yeah, it, it's all on <coughs> it's all on Earth in another dimension. It's all on Earth. Everything's happened here. This is the world. Oh yes, it did. Yeah, on, in another dimension. Uh, Alcyon is the top star. And then there's a spiral like this. And our sun is the eighth star. There's Merope. There's Maya. And that's spelt... Um, it's actually spelt Maya. The, same, the Mayans say they come from this star. Then there's Electra. Then there's Tejeta. Uh, Coeli. Atlas. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's... When you look at the Pleiades... When you, when you look at the Pleiades, that's God. That's the God of our system. And it's dragging our sun with Sirius in a binary. And it's dragging them. You, you, you'll notice, you'll see the Pleiades, the seven sisters, and they, you, it's a spiral. And we are being carried from that. Because you see, <coughs> the Pleiades are over here in Taurus, in the shoulder of the bull. And opposite that is the centre of the Milky Way galaxy between Scorpio and Sagittarius. So when you look at Scorpio and Sagittarius in the sky, that's the centre of the Milky Way galaxy. The Pleiades are the opposite. So they, they are flying in that direction and we are, being, we are going with them. That's why, that's why everybody looks to Orion. In the Bible it says, look to Orion for salvation. Because these stars here are going away from the centre and we are going... We are going towards Orion. Of course, you've got to, Orion is important. Sirius, all those stars. Sirius is up here. Sirius, the Pleiades, Orion, all of these stars are going away from the centre of the Milky Way galaxy as they, as they go away from the centre of the Milky Way galaxy. If you look at it from on top, the galaxy is like a spiral, you see? It's, it spirals out. And from, from profile, it's just a thin dish. Well, we're going in that direction, or at least it's in, in the wake of those planets as they so go out. Where we came from and we've descended from and yep. Back. Yeah, we came from. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yep. That's how. Yep. That's what yeah, I'm trying to say. That too, yeah, and he did, because Hermes is mind, the right mind. It's Thoth. Remember Mercury. Li Quicksilver means living silver. It's the life in you. Mercury is the motor system, the sensory system, it's all of that. And it is the thinking, it is, the, is the, the one that makes it. But in a higher dimension. You see, we are about to inherit more subtle bodies after 2012. Yeah. It's going to be another 150 years because of miscalculations. No, it's, it's happening. It's happening slowly and quickly, in jolts <coughs> and slowly, because we need to be eased into this. But um, according to most of the people I've read up on, um, we are the ones that will remain here on another dimension, and the souls that don't make it, don't cut the grade, will need to go to other places to reincarnate and learn their lessons elsewhere, either as animals or as human beings. It will be on the same level or a lower level. Never do they get promoted. Nowhere in the universe is there any kind of promotion if there's no vibration. Check out the work of Maurice Cotterell. So what's going to happen to the bankers and the lawyers then? Well, they better repent. <laughs> they better repent. repent. Repentance is for them. It's, re it's for them. We love them too. They're evil, but we love them. They're doing their work. They're doing their work out of what they know. They are trapped here. They're all prisoners.
We've been prisoners for a long time. It's time to awaken now. Yeah, I was going to show. I was going to show this too, guys. See the Korean flag, yeah. and see Pepsi. Uh, they designed this in the year 1907, and because of the new generation, it's it's a symbol for the new generation. When you turn it upside down, the new generation is dead. They they know they know what the, yeah they know what they are doing. You see, it's fire and water. Electric and positive, or electric and magnetism, you see? And it's this. There's the four elements, earth, fire, air and water. And these guys, see the yin and yang? That's, that's clearly yin and yang, and here they just do it subtly. That's why I was saying, look, pay attention and notice. And check out the video on YouTube called uh, the Zionist Olympics. Or, yeah, I wouldn't drink this shit. If you want to die, you can drink it. Uh, you'll, never, you'll never send drink any of that. It is dead. They deliberately put poisons in there and toxins to stop this from happening. crazy, man. It's crazy. Yeah. Corrupt the food supply. What you put in is what you get. Your temple is what goes in your mouth. Watch what goes in your mouth. Money. Donald Rumsfeld made a packet in the 80s when he got aspartame in, in Surly. He's got mansions all over the world because people are chewing on aspartame. Tastes great. Yeah, you see all the coaches, the football coaches. You know that coach from Manchester United? Yeah, yeah Dennis Pagan, the coach of the Roos, he was always that. I thought, man, you're gonna, he, he's dead. He's gonna, he's gonna, he, was, he was already looking aged. aged. Uh, but I would never put any sugar-free anything in my body. No conscience. No conscience, mate. They've never reached here. Nothing, not even a spark. You need to pray that they repent because it's going to be absolutely savage what is coming. And it's not from God and it's not Armageddon. See, when Christians talk about the last days, we've been in the last days, Pisces. Pisces is the last sign. This is the first. Of course we're in the last days. It's Armageddon. In Daniel, in Daniel the feet of the, image of, of the image are iron and clay which don't mix. It's a mutable sign. Mutability, belief and doubt, belief and doubt. We're going to Aquarius where you know. We're, we're knowers now. We know. You've got to know. You go up there and you get out of that cerebellum and you stop being bellicose. You stop creating controversy with God. You stop fighting with God and you embrace God as the, um, the Sistine Chapel indicates. Um, I'm a Virgo, but the sun was in Leo when I was born. Yes, yes, yeah. Physically up there, it's, in, it's, it's 30, about 33 degrees slipped back because the sun goes around through, backwards through these signs every 25,920 years. So, yeah, 2,000 years ago, Aries was popping up at the equinox. Now it's Pisces. This point is here now. And, of course, Aquarius now is going to be there for the next 2,000 years. It matters not. The same. This stays the same. In fact, this rules. these signs rule the day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Aries is always there, the Lamb of God, in the morning. When you see the, right, the sun coming up in the morning, even though it might be, like, for instance, right now the sun is in Leo, so when you go tomorrow, if you go and watch the sun rise, Leo is behind the sun. But it's still the 30 degree slot of the house of Aries, always on the horizon, Aries is there. Taurus, Gemini, 
Cancer, Leo, Virgo, the Virgin is always there. Always there. And she receives, the sun is always born of a virgin because the sun is Aries, the head. And virgin, the virgin is always from 4 o'clock to 6, 6 o'clock in the evening. And she always watches the sunset. And as the sunset, it goes into Libra. The sun always sets here at Libra. Libra judges the scales, judge the sun. And it's always there. And these are the deacons of the sun. The Southern Cross, the victim, the wolf, the wolf. See, the wolf always devours the little red riding hood. The sun turns red at sunset and the wolf is always there at Libra. And the sun gets crucified and gets a crown of thorns. That's the deacons. They are the deacons of Libra. See, it's all about there's Snow White and the seven dwarves. There's Prince Charming. The sun is Prince Charming. There's nothing more charming than a rising sun to bring our salvation so we can see where we're going, so we can eat food. There it is there in our nursery rhymes. You see, the gold is the sun, the 24 birds, the 24 hours of the sun's journeying. The silver is the moon. It's all there in our nursery rhymes. Just, you just have to pay attention. There is nothing that exists that is not this science. It's all connected to this science. Can I just clarify one thing about the 12 faults per month? If you had a gestation period of nine months, then you quite possibly or might be lacking of the other three salts of the non-gestation period? Is that... Oh, yeah. You, you, we're, we must supplement all the salts. But in particular, focus on the three. I was born in Aries. I must watch potassium phosphate, sodium sulfate, and Pollux and Castor, potassium chloride. That's my three. You can buy them individually or the uh, combination 12, all 12 in one capsule. Is um, that okay to take 12? Do you want to show us that? Please. This is a good opportunity. Good point. Good point. Thanks for that. We need to see this. Guys, have a look at this. You might want to get get the details. This sister here has... Yep. Schusler. Yeah, Dr. Schusler. These are the 12 cell salts. Look at this. Schusler tissue salts. The tissue salts. Make sure they're made well. I, I imagine, you know, they wouldn't, these guys wouldn't have Schusler on there if they, you know, they made it in... Yep. Yep. Yeah. Don't plan too far ahead. Don't go too far ahead. That's it. Thank you, brother. It's all in the moment. Thanks, guys. Beautiful.